Call of Duty Warzone Season 3 is upon us, so welcome to the best settings for Season 3 in Warzone. It's your boy FPS here, welcome back to the channel. If you enjoy this video, remember to subscribe to the channel, I appreciate it a lot. Let's get into the best settings for Warzone in Season 3. Not only Warzone though, I'm going to give you the window settings that you need to be rocking with whenever you are playing Warzone. These window settings can give you a few extra frames and also optimize your game, make sure you don't crash, make sure there's no stutters, so try and follow along with these as best as you can. First thing we're going to do is go to our desktop, hit the Windows button and search power and sleep. You're going to find this power and sleep settings. This doesn't matter so much. It doesn't matter when it sleeps, but come over here, additional power settings and tap high performance or ultimate performance if you have a very high end PC, but at least do high performance. If you do ultimate performance on a lower end PC, be wary. You might get some stuttered. So that's why I keep it on high performance for mid range and below. Next, come right back to where we were type in game mode and this is where we get this so best case scenario if you have a nvidia card usually if you put this on you might gain two to four frames per second from my testing however if you do have a amd card you're going to want to turn this off in most situations you got to test this for yourself i can't tell you if it's going to be good for you or not but test it and test for stutters although you might get higher frames by a few frames you might also receive stuttering so if you have an amd card make sure to check if this is better on or off nvidia most of the time though you want to keep it on it adds more benefits. Two more things here. We're going to want to hit background apps. Okay. Click on this. And this is probably going to be on and you're going to want to turn this off. What this does is turn off all of this junk that you do not need whenever you're playing in Warzone, such as alarm clocks, calculator, camera, all this stuff will turn off once you're in full screen inside of your game. This is something that really affected my RAM usage or VRAM usage, which right in turn affects your FPS kind of a lot more than you would even expect. So turn this one off. One more thing. This is something that you're going to have to do a little bit more on graphic settings. Click on this and this is what it should bring you to. Once you do click on graphic settings, you're going to want to hit browse and find the game file. Obviously you need to find your own game file here, but here's mine. It's under games, modern warfare, and then just double click the game hit options and then hit high performance and save. So everything we just did is basically turn off background apps and turn up the priority for Warzone, which is something we could do for every game that we play. But in this case, it's just Warzone. So we click on Warzone and that's all for Windows settings. Now looking on into the Warzone actual menu here, we're going to start off just by one thing here on keyboard and mouse. This doesn't have to do with much visuals, but you're going to want to turn mouse smoothing off. Disable it if you are on mouse and keyboard. This is basically just putting input delay from where your mouse is from where you want it to go and turn this off now onto general field of view we're going to want this as high as we can make it which is 120 120 is the best for everything console players don't get the luxury of changing their field of view and that's something that's a big advantage here on pc so take advantage of that advantage you have i have this on affected but the only other thing that's going to affect you is your brightness just make this barely visible be a little bit more than barely visible that's my biggest suggestion there i don't know it's going to depend on how bright your monitor is in the first place but if it's dull, you're going to want this higher. Just make sure that this barely visible is actually pretty visible. As for the graphics, we're going to come down here and make this full screen. That's the first thing you want to do if that's not already like that. Make sure the monitor you have selected is the monitor that you're gaming with. In my case, it's whatever this is. Same thing with your graphics card and then your screen rate. Make it as high as you can have it. If it's 144, keep it at 144. If it's at 60 or if it's at 240, 280, 360, I don't know. Whatever it is, just make it as high as you can. There's no reason not to. It's not going to affect anything. This is a setting that's very annoying for a lot of us. You want this at 100, but this thing resets all the time. If your game ever seems blurry like this, you'll be able to tell in the main menu. You just have to reset this, go 100, and this thing will update for you. This changes all the time. It always gets reset. So make sure to just keep keep an eye on this one. Aspect ratio automatic. So it's going to be 16.9. V-Sync turn this off off. I'm on an AMD computer today, but there's also going to be NVIDIA settings here. You're going to want to turn any NVIDIA settings off if you have those as well. Custom frame rate limit. We're going to want this on unlimited. There's no reason to cap your frames unless if you are running a very delicate machine, but if you're not, you're going to want to just cap out however hard your computer can go. It's never going to run unsafe as long as you don't have it overclocked or anything like that. 
Your display gamma, keep this at 2.2. 2.4 is best for TVs if you're running on a big TV, if you want to try that. But 2.2 is better for monitors by far. Now with settings, a lot of people will say just turn it all the way down. If you want to maximize your FPS, that's true. But visibility gets very, very badly affected if you have some of these things on low that I'm going to show you here. Streaming quality does not matter to you if you are trying to push FPS and visibility. Have this on low. It does not create that big frame difference between normal and low, but I keep it on low. A lot of re a lot of VRAM is used if we do that. Texture resolution. This is the one thing that I'm able to sacrifice frames on, and it's not that many frames. It's only the matter of however much VRAM you have. If you have a lot of VRAM, you can put this even higher, but I like to keep it around middle of wherever my max is. So for most people, that's going to be low or normal. And if you have a really bad PC, that's going to be very low. Just try to aim for middle of wherever that is just to keep this game still looking crispy because this does a affect how a lot of objects look and just does not make the game look very good. Texture filter, turn this on low. If anything, this just becomes very distracting. It kind of takes away from the game, the competitive advantage. So keep that on low. Particle quality is another one that I'm able to pick between low and high. And I have to go with high here. The frames are just not worth how good this looks. So I would keep this on high. The frames really don't get affected too much from this one. Bullet impact. This could be disabled or enabled, but I'm going to have this on disabled. If you have a super high end PC, it does not matter. Enabled, it'll just show bullet holes and stuff. Very, very rarely does this actually give you an advantage. So I just keep it on disabled. Tessellation, keep this disabled. This is a frame hit. And more, more than just being a frame hit, it's also a very stuttery. I would just recommend keeping this on disabled. It's really not worth the looks. All it does is really just add jagginess to the lines. On-demand texture streaming, we could keep this disabled and then now onto shadows and lighting. So this is one that I like to keep everything pretty much off or down maximum. Shadows does not matter in this game. You still get to see human shadows at low. You don't need chiseled shadows like you get whenever you're on extra or low. And this is a huge frame hit. I would keep this on low. It's not worth the looks. It's not worth the few extra lines. Spot shadows and sun shadows. This could be good if you're on a very high end PC and it doesn't hurt you too much. But when we're pushing frames, I just have these is disabled but for high-end pcs this is going to give you good rendering whenever you're running or on a helicopter or anything like that that'll help with the rendering so i would turn these on if you have a super high-end pc but once again i want to keep this as close to middle as possible from the whole thing and these do affect your vram a little bit particle lighting low no need to have this any higher if anything it just makes the reflections a little bit brighter which is actually not advantage to you from a competitive standpoint you pretty much always want ambient occlusion off or disabled same thing with direct X ray tracing. If you have this option, it's usually on NVIDIA cards. So if you have AMD, you're not, you're just going to see disabled, but if you even have it, turn it off. All it does is just give you more shadows, more darkness, more places for people to hide with their fully blacked out uniform. So just keep this completely disabled. This is going to hurt you. This is only good if you're playing like campaign mode and want that immersion. Now with this, you have two, or I guess three choices. You either want to do the two X or off. Okay. You could do either of the two X's or off. One X is going to give you the same effect as off, and it's just going to hurt you so why do it if you have this on 2x put this on zero okay if you have it on off put it at one. If you don't, you're going to have some weird screen issues. The only difference between off and 2x is you're going to have the smoothing of the lines, which can help you at a distance. Trees can get choppy and you might think there's a person there or anything like that. That's what happens with anti-aliasing off. At 2x, it looks nicer, but that one's all up to you. If you have this on off and one, this is going to still look good. You're just going to have the jaggy lines and the best performance. Depth of field, you could have this off. This What this is doing is basically blurring out everything, but the center of your scope. Some people might find the scope distracting. If you do, you could try to have it on. It's not going to hurt your frames too much. But in my opinion, I think the blur actually makes it a little bit harder to see. World motion blur and weapon motion blur off and off. Don't have that on. Film grain. This is just going to add a grain to your game. I don't recommend having this on at all. It just looks bad in my opinion. I'd recommend that off for visual clarity. Dynamic resolution. Just have this off. This is just a target frame rate. We don't need that. And now on to your audio. This is something that I see done a wrong a lot whenever I'm watching any of these. I've seen a few of these videos and everyone seems to do this wrong, at least the ones that I was watching. So audio mix, that's up to your headphones, boost low. All of my headphone recommendations will be down below, but this is up to you. Mine
line works best with boost low you could test this by playing play audio test and just hear for footsteps and that's the most important thing for you master volume this game's really loud so keep it low but that's up to you just don't make yourself deaf i guess music volume have this off i don't want to hear music dialogue does not matter i have it at 50 i could hear fine with 50 effects volume a lot of people say this only affects gunshots precision airstrikes and things of that nature but if you look or if you listen really really closely you'll notice that it also affects footsteps and that's no good we need to be able to hear footsteps so i just keep this at 100 yes precision airstrikes are still very loud but footsteps are also still very loud so this is very very important they not music off hit marker whatever you want i like the mw though mono audio the last one that's important that you guys need to even copy is have it disabled if you have this enabled if someone's running on your left you're going to hear them on your right and your left so you won't be able to really pinpoint where someone is so i recommend this at disabled that is the most important one out of all of these even effects volume if you have this enabled you're never even going to be able to even hear the footsteps or pinpoint where the footsteps are so footsteps are useless if this is enabled so keep it off everything else is up to you but those are the best settings for season three if you want my recommendation for the best pcs right now for warzone that'll be linked down below same thing with the headset in all different budget types we have the low end middle end and high end systems those will all be available down below in the description box hopefully we improved your fps today if you want to see future games how to improve your game even more warzone things be sure to subscribe because we are coming in hot all things fps on this channel kind of speaks for the name. I'll see you in the next one.